Hi everyone, we're back for a bonus segment of my podcast episode and today I have with me Dr. Sunita. We're going to be playing some games and these are games that she plays with the children to help them process and cope with emotions. Dr. Sunita, maybe you can tell us about the first game. Okay, so this one is called Tam Game, right? Mm. So it's Tam Ball. So basically, wherever your Tam lands, when someone throws you the ball, wherever your Tam lands, that's what you got to talk about. Oh. So for example, if I throw it, then you're so curious. Okay, I got to talk about something that made me curious, for example. Oh. Yeah, so, so this is like an informal way of helping children to talk about emotions, mm. right? And it can be done any time of the day or any time of the week, for example. You don't need for an incident to do it, mm. right? So for example, I say, okay, I'm going to throw this ball, I will throw and then wherever, say, okay, worry it. Okay, so talk about something that got you worried in the week, for example. Mm. Yeah, so that's how people do it, yeah. Okay, so now I'm the child <laughs> and Dr. Sunita's just going to throw the ball at me. Ready? Yes. Guess set? Guess set. <laughs> <laughs> okay, catch. Okay, where did your thumb land? Defeated. Ah, okay. Oh, so this is a big one. <laughs> I, I cannot remember the number of times that I got, de- I felt defeated. Um... Well, this is a good one. This is mm. a good one. Uh, I actually shared this story with my daughter when she lost the the competition. I said that uh, this year, during the Star Awards, I was nominated for Best Actress. Mm. And I honestly thought that I had a good chance, but I didn't win. And I actually felt quite sad too. I felt that I did a great job, but still, you know, I didn't win. So I'm also disappointed. Uh, I also felt a little bit defeated, but... Uh, I I always try to see the learning points mm. from there. So the one time I felt defeated was, yeah, that I can remember most recently because of the conversation that I had with her yeah. was that. Mm, yeah. It is a lot easier and actually it can be quite fun like over the dining table and then you're like, eh, your turn. Yes, and so you like, see, you know, yeah. but you see what just happened, right? Because I, I actually ended up catching it here so there was no thumb. Yeah. So what happens is the person has to throw again. Yeah, right, so let me give you this. Okay, so throw again. Fun, you see? Okay, so you see now it became like that, right? So uh. because there's a thumb somewhere, I can uh. use it already. Right. So you realize that it can be a bit interactive. It's not not everybody the first time you throw the thumb will come out. Yes, right? yes, because yes. Sometimes you're just like, you know, a bit clumsy or not ready. So like for example, curious came up for me, right? So for example, like when curious came up, um, then I as the parent, for example, in this scenario, I can talk about something that made me curious. Yeah. Right. So for example, like for me, um, last week somebody um, used a, a new word and I was very curious, like what is this word and then I went around looking for it and then later I told my friend and said hey nobody uses these words in common conversation she's like are you sure I'll go find for you three people who do I said okay and she found three people so but you see I was curious about a word I went around researching for it and then I still gave a back I said nobody knows this word <laughs> what, what is that uh crap crapulence crapulence yeah you see okay very good so <laughs> crapulence is not <laughs> <laughs> it's not a common word, right? So I felt like people wouldn't know this word. So I, I asked and she managed to find three people. But it's not common. Right. right? But you realise because the word is like, you know, it's interesting, you get curious about it. So that was a moment when I was curious. Okay. So you see the child, if, if now coming out of role, if the child, right, if it's a word, the child will learn a new word. Right. If it's an incident that um, showed that I know I went and do a lot of research, now the child learns that not everything a parent even an adult has answers mm. they gotta go search for it mm. so a lot of these things happens like by the way mm. right and it's a game so I get to learn a bit about you you get to learn a bit about me and then we can just toss it aside over okay. you wanna try one more? yeah come okay there you go tired <laughs> <laughs> looks like all the things you're experiencing <laughs> yeah I know it's, oh this one was last week uh, I was uh, I was not well and then I had to come and do a podcast recording as well and I was really, really tired. And I've been really mm. tired for the last two weeks because I've been hustling, doing a lot of different things, planning for family holidays, getting all the paperwork done. So that pretty much uh, burnt me out. So, yeah. But I recognized that I was tired. And I think I also recognized that I didn't take care of myself. That's why I felt sick. Mm. Uh, it was my body's way of telling me that, hey, you, you need to take a break. And so I slept it off over the weekend and felt so much better. There. Okay. Okay, hurt. Ah, okay. So, um, hurt is a, is, is a big one, right? And this happened uh, two weeks ago, right? Uh, and it's somebody that I know, so I won't mention the person's name. Somebody that I know and made a comment about me, 
right? It was more to do with dressing and the weight gain that I have gone through recently. So she made this comment that, you know, you're gaining a lot of weight, you really should lose weight. And I was like, but I have a mirror in front of me. I can see that I gain weight. I, I don't need people to keep telling me in my face that you gain weight, you gain weight. So I felt hurt when it came from her because it's someone I know for a long time. Mm. And um, But I guess that's why she said it because she saw that the last one year, the weight gain is so much. But it, it's still hurtful, mm. right? And her advice was not helpful. It's like, you should eat less. But I love eating. <laughs> How is that helpful to me? So it's like, you should eat less, you should this, you should that. So firstly, I felt hurt. But her recommendations was not helpful because it's basically trying to like um, tell me you're not doing the right thing. So it's like a double whammy kind of thing. You feel even more hurt mm. that people think you don't know what to do. So so that that was for me for hurt. Okay, let's throw this again. I got two. You can pick one then. Loved and loving or generous? Loved and loving. Uh, I would say loved and loving, right? Mm. Okay, so loved and loving. I remember, I think my daughter, she asked me today if I was feeling better like just out of the blue she just asked me because she knew I wasn't well and I was busy so uh, I felt loved mm. loving means uh, a time where I, I'm loving is it it what can mean both ways you can uh, share whichever that yeah yeah so that's me b- feeling loved and then loving I think uh I, I always I always um do my best for the family la. so I think uh sometimes I burn myself out for them and I think that's my way of loving them Mm. Yeah, so that's why. Oh, that's also one of the reasons why I got so tired because I was trying to put a family trip together for them, so that my children get to experience and see the world while they're at this curious age and before the academic requirements and demands start kicking in. Yep. We were playing with the thumb ball, T H U M B A L L, and it's been really fun doing this because to be able to talk about emotions in a very non-confrontational way is very healthy and i hope this has been fun for you dr sunita i'm not gonna let you just come for nothing so i've got a little present for you i mean a big box but a little present okay <laughs> let's get me the big box <laughs> thank you so much for your the time box? no oh, you can you open so up and see what's inside okay as well as it's not uh, it's, as well as it's not like something that's going to jump into no no face. it doesn't so oh, wow so this is uh well i always uh, kind of want a, my female guest to pamper themselves a little bit wow thank you so much uh it's part of the whole i I find it's part of the whole mindfulness uh practice like yeah when you put on a mask because this this mask when you put it on uh facial mask not not the yeah yeah (laughs) you you actually have to lie down because it will slip off your face if you don't right because there are some masks where you can put it on and you can do your work but then this one it forces you to kind of lie down and rest Right, and then breathe and do whatever you need to. Because I find myself when I do use this mask that that is my time where I can breathe and sort of be mindful. And because mm. you're a mindfulness coach, <laughs> I guess. I mean, I, I, I didn't know what else to get you. So I thought this, no, might, no, the, the, this, this might is, be good. Uh, this is excellent. And also the, the fact that um, in a way now you have told me to rest. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because otherwise it's like my, my plans are always packed all the way. And um, I do realize that I like mask. I don't do it often enough. Ah. So then when I use this, I can think of you and say, okay, she asked me to rest. Yeah, because you have to lie down. And I, I tried using this while I'm working. And it just bleh. And so you just... Because <laughs> I'm that kind of person too. Like I try I to do things. multitask, right? Like yeah. you, while you're doing your hair, you're answering emails. While you're doing your face, you're like doing something else. So this is one of those things that forces you to Thank have you. to lie down. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I have something for you too. Yay! Um, and these are books. Right, because you, you do have young um, children, so I got you one. I mean, these are the two books that I've got. One is for your, um, you Thank know, for you. you to do with your kids. Oh. So there are coloring, there are activities that you can do, right? So that's one that you could do. Um, so your child can do the coloring part, you can support them. Okay. Right? And then this is for the whole family. Mindfulness for yes. the family. So this is um, the first part of the book is a little bit on theory, mm. right? Like what is mindfulness, uh, setting intentions. The, the the other half of the book, the entire half at the back, is all activities, mm. right? So there are tons of activities should keep you engaged at least for one to two years. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot of activities that can be done. Okay, so I thought this might be helpful. Thank you. The font is not too small, which means that it's going to be quite an easy read. So for those of you who are intimidated by you know textbook style of books, I think this is also one of the books that you can consider. 
Thank you so much, thank Dr. You. Sunita. And thanks for having me. The most welcome. And thank you so much for spending time with me. Thank you. Well, our conversation is already up on YouTube. So if you haven't listened to it, I can assure you that you will not want to miss it because there's so much gems from that episode all about emotional regulation in children and how we can help them better cope with that. And with that, I'll say goodbye. Bye.